The 2023 Women's World Cup is officially underway in Australia and New Zealand. The United States is looking to win its third straight championship. Accomplishing that would make them the first team in men's and women's history to do so. Team USA opens the group stage against Vietnam Friday, and in the coming weeks, they'll face the Netherlands and Portugal. Joining us now is National Soccer Hall of Famer and 1999 World Cup champion goalkeeper Brianna Scurry. Brianna, thank you so much for being with us. Tell us what it's like to prepare for a game like this, physically, but also, of course, mentally. I tell you right now, um, the team is getting ready. Uh, they're excited. They're trying to make sure that they get everything they need with, re with regards to nutrition, sleep, if they need uh, some therapy or treatment for uh, injuries or whatnot. They want to make sure that they are fit and ready to go. And then, of course, mentally, they want to be going over the things that they have to do specifically, like goalkeeping. You got to make sure that you do your top three um, items on your list. And then in terms of the field players, and especially the young ones, there's 14 new players that have never been in a World Cup before. Just trying to calm those nerves, that's a, a big priority for them. Yeah, and tell me about that, because there are, they're not only the rookies with, with jittery nerves, but there's some veterans. So what are the, what's going on in the heads of the veterans? And also, what are the veterans telling those rookies about, if it's even possible, about how to calm those nerves? I think what happens is um, the, the veteran players want to let the rookies know that they belong here, that they deserve to be here, that they, they are part of this team and that they're vital and important. But just to tell them not to get caught up in the hoopla or the social media or all these things that occur outside of the, of the circle of the team, just to focus on the few things that they need to do. For example, Trinity Rodman, this is her first time. She's 20 years old, and so they don't want to get her too hyped up with everything else going on outside of the team, but just making sure she's focusing on what she needs to do when she um, is called uh, upon to do it. So it's it's keeping it as simple as you can is, is a key. You've performed on these big stages. Tell us what's that, what that's like. In other words, is it a, just a constant sense of intensity, or were you ever on the pitch and you kind of went, oh, my gosh, wait a minute, I'm here. I mean, does it, does it <laughs> sort of hit you uh, out of the blue sometimes? That's a great question. Um, I was always just focused on the task at hand. For me, it was nice as a goalkeeper because every once in a while, you know, the ball's at the other end of the field, and so you take in the sight, you take in the crowd, you take in... Um, the, the gravity of the situation and the stage you're on. But mostly when you're a field player, you are constantly focusing on the next play, the next move. And so you, you have to really stay, stay committed to the task at hand. But um, there's times, especially driving the bus into a stadium, you get to really see and feel the pageantry and people tailgating and stuff. It's, it's easy to get excited and, and get emotional about it. Uh, there was a time um, for the 99 World Cup where we all walked out of the stadium uh, onto the pitch and we were all crying because 70,000 people were cheering for us and taking pictures and stuff. So sometimes you get caught up, but uh, when it's time to, to do the business, you got to switch it off. Speaking of doing the business, what is your favorite piece of business? Or tell us the story about a moment that for you, some of us might guess what it is, but that really <laughs> for you is this is your, your most powerful memory. Yeah, as, as, as you have said, most people would say uh, the save in the 99 World Cup um, obviously was an incredible moment for not only me, but also for women's soccer in this country and around the world, actually. Um, that is the, the most uh, important moment for that particular time. But I would say in the Olympic Games, for me, in 2004, playing in that Olympics, that was my third time uh, I had just passed, my father had passed, unfortunately, two months before, and I felt like I was playing absolutely out of my mind uh, that Olympic Games. And fortunately, we were able to bring home the gold, um, and it was very emotional for me. And so I would say uh, 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Greece was my favorite. If I might go back to the 1999 moment for just a second, yeah. does a moment sure. like that happen and then you, you were acting so much on instinct that you sort of watch it? After it's over, or when it's going on, do you remember having a thought that that was anything other than just pure instinct? Uh, that's a great question, too. So we boiled it down to the absolute essence of it. So my job was to save one, 
and all my teammates' jobs were to make one. And in order to make sure I was only concerned with what I was doing, I had my back to my teammates when they would kick, so I didn't know if their kick went in or not, except for the crowd noise. And so I wasn't focusing on anything that I couldn't control. My job was to save one. And I will say that when I was walking into the goal on that third kicker, I knew that was the one I was going to save even before she got there and before I got into the goal. I knew that was the one. And so sometimes when athletes talk about having a feeling or a sensation or, you know, some kind of slow motion type of uh, sensation and feeling, I had that on that third kicker. And so I would say that you go by instinct, but um, that particular time I think was divine. And now I have chills hearing you tell that story. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for uh, being here to talk with us. Brian Absolutely. Scurry. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much.